Hi everyone, welcome to Global SKO 2020. Uh, this is the session with a little bit of preliminary coursework for our um, session, Are You Ready for Python? We did deliver this last year as well, uh, where we focused more on the installation and the setup of your demo machines to impress your customers with how cool the R and Python integration in Tableau is. Um, for this year, we decided to skip that part and kind of make you do that on your own before you come to our class so we can focus on hopefully more interesting stuff. And this video is uh, meant to guide you through the installation process, which is pretty straightforward, but still, just to have a guideline. We're going to cover a little bit about Tableau. Please make sure you have some very recent versions running, ideally the most recent ones, especially with prep, since the external services connection to Tableau prep is fairly new. And then you can choose if you want to install R or Python or maybe both. And uh, that's, that's basically what we're going to focus on right now. So without anything else to do, let's start right away with installing R. Um, to do this, we go to rproject.org, which is the homepage of the R project. Up here on the top left, you will see download from CRAN. CRAN is like a repository for all things R. You have to pick a mirror. Um, ideally, I would pick one that is geographically close to you. Since I'm in Germany, I'm just going to pick a server in Germany. We're going to install R for Windows. If you're on Mac OS, the process should be fairly similar, but you might want to look up a little bit what's happening there and then up here it says install R for the first time which is exactly what we're doing so finally we end up at the page where we can download the installer and here we can see it's version 362 which is not the most recent version but it's one that we know is going to work and after I download this uh, we can start the installation process just like any other Windows application click run and as long as you stick to the defaults which I suggest you do unless you really know what you're doing it's basically an exercise of clicking OK and next a few times where do we want to install it? What do we want to install? We don't want to change anything. We want to create a start icon, a start menu, a menu a start menu icon, and we also want to set a few uh, links here. And off we go. Excellent. And once this is done, we click finish, and we are done with installing R. Now next, we need to establish the connection between Tableau and R, and to do that, we use an open source package called rserve, which you can find at this link down here, but um, you don't really have to install anything from that website. You can read up a little, about, a little bit about it, but we don't download anything from that. We just basically uh, install it from within R. Before we do this, though, I want to show you a little trick um, how to make the startup of R a little easier, and that is by putting the link or the path to the R binaries into your system environment variables. And the easiest way to do that is just go to your start menu, start typing env. For environment variables, make sure you edit the one for the whole system. And there we go. Then click on environment variables down here. Uh, make sure you change the one for the whole system. And down here we see the path. So just double click on that. And then make sure that the folder to your R installation uh, path is, is entered here. So click on new and add one. So that's just really helpful to make sure you can start R from wherever in the file system you are. And uh, we can do this by just starting up a new command prompt. Um, one thing you might want to be careful of is whenever you do anything here with R and Python, just always run your command lines as, a, as an administrator. This will save you some trouble um, whenever it comes to installing stuff. So let's just try if we can fire up R by just simply typing the capital R. And since we put the binaries in the, in the system environment path, um, it can find it. We can see it's the version we installed. And now we can start installing the package rserve. The easiest way to do that on R is just using the install packages command. And then here in brackets, we provide the name of the package, which in this case is rserve. Once we do this, again, R asks us to pick, to pick a mirror where to install from. Again, I'm going to pick my German mirror, and off we go. Okay, here we are. Packages were installed, and we're back at the R prompt. Now, before we actually check what's happening and if everything's working, let me do one last step, and that is to install a few more packages. So you don't really have to do this, but for the purpose <clears throat> of this session, we recommend you to install the Slack R and the Salesforce R packages, just because we're going to work with those during so we can use install packages again. And here we can use a little trick by providing the concatenate function C. We can also provide multiple package names here. So I'm just going to install the Slack R package and also the 
Sales Force R package. Um, like close it with two brackets, and that way we can install two packages basically at the same time. And you can see there's also a number of dependencies, but R is going to take care of that and install everything you need. That might take a minute or two. Perfect, and here we go. All the libraries have been installed and we're back at the R prompt. Now we can actually start using it, and in order to do that, we first have to load the library rserve that we installed. We can do this by using the library function and then again provide the name of the package we want to load. Perfect, if there's no error message, that means it's been loaded successfully. And the simplest way to start the rserve, well, server basically with all the default values, is just by providing serve and then open and closing brackets and then we should get a message okay ready to answer queries that's exactly what we're looking for so now we can actually start um, investigating if that works so I'm going to switch over to Tableau desktop and the way to connect Tableau desktop to the external services is in the help menu there is the settings and performance sub menu and then here you can find the menu manage external service connection and you present it dialog window where you can choose between or you have to choose between rserve or tabpy for now let's select rserve rserve is running on our local server we just need to remove the http because in this case the dialog just wants it without that it's a little bit annoying and back here the port um, the default port that rserve runs as is 6311 you either have to remember that or when you start up your rserve you can also provide the port number and then pick something that you can remember okay last one Click on test connection and hopefully uh, you get this message successfully connected to the external service. Perfect. So we are halfway done because we connected everything to, uh, we installed R, we installed rserve and we also uh, installed some packages and we made sure that the connection works. So next is Python. Python is pretty much the same. We start by installing Python. So we go to python.org and then you can find the download menu. We will not again use the most recent build 381 we're going to use a little bit older build that we know works reliably so click on windows and then on the next page it's well hidden i know down here you can find python 376 that's the one we're going to use so click on that and then on the resulting page again it's not really easy to find scroll all the way down to this table and here you can find the windows x86 64 executable installer that's the one we want so just click on that and it's going to download the installer. I already prepared that for you. In here it's really important because of our system guidelines that you run this one as an administrator. So just right click and run as administrator again. Otherwise you won't be able to install Python on your laptop. Click yes. And again here the installation process is pretty straightforward. We don't want to customize anything unless you know what you're doing. So just click on install now and everything should work. Perfect, so setup was successful. We can basically close this window and Python is installed. Okay, so, but before we do anything with Python, I recommend adding the path to Python again to the system environment variables. So just, uh, just so we don't have to navigate through the folders all the time. So again, we can use the same shortcut, just edit the system environment variables and uh, make sure to go to that window. And there we go, and then edit the environment variables and make sure again to use the system path. Double click on that. And this is the part where it gets a bit tricky because now we need to find the path where the actual um, Python binaries are located. And that is a bit tricky. I'm going to show you where to find them. So if you just go to your hard drive, and this is only if you installed it in the default location, otherwise, you hopefully know where you installed it. But the default location is on your local disk C. Then there is uh, the users folder, then look for the one with the credentials that you installed the, uh, the software as, in my case that's just my name. Then there's a hidden, hidden folder called app data. In case you don't see that, go up to view and make sure hidden items is checked so that you can see hidden items in your Windows Explorer. By the way, I always think it's a good session anyways, a good sec um, setting anyways. So go to app data and then the next folder is local. There is programs, and underneath these you will find Python, and then since we only installed one version of Python, this is Python 3.7, there we go. 
and here you can see that's the Python. We will also need the scripts folder because that's where one of our package managers is installed. But for now, let's just copy and paste this folder by clicking up here and copy pasting that into the dialog here. So we can just add a new one by clicking on new, pasting this one, and then generating another one where we also provide the scripts subfolder down here. This is really important as well. Okay, then we click OK, OK, and OK. And now we can start working with Python. So I'm going to open up another command line. Again, please make sure you're using run as administrator, otherwise you might run in trouble. Or you actually will run in trouble. So now let's just check if everything works as expected. So let's look if Python works. We just type Python and we open up the Python um, command line, which is always uh, indicated by those three uh, chevrons. And it's also the version we installed. That's nice. For now, let's exit out of Python by typing exit. And let's also check another thing, which is pip, which is the package manager for Python. So just type pip, and if everything works, it should spit out its, its help file. Now, before we can go to install tabpy, it's good practice to make sure that pip is also the latest version or package manager. And since we're using pip to upgrade pip, it's kind of a weird thing. So we have to use a command that's not really intuitive, but just trust me on this one. It is python-m. And this is how we kind of execute. And the thing we want to execute is we want to run pip. We want to run the install command. We want to run the upgrade uh, option in the install command. And the package we want to upgrade is pip itself. So basically the command is python-m pip install dash dash upgrade pip. Okay, so it doesn't have to make sense to you. Just know that this exists. Press enter and you will see, okay, we already have an installation 19.2.3. We are uninstalling that now, and we're going to install the latest version, which is 20.0.2. Perfect. So now that that's done, we can actually use pip in the regular way. So just type pip install, and we're going to use pip to install our tabpy package. So pip install tabpy, easy as that. And again, pip will go out, try to find the tabpy package and also all the dependencies, download them, and then the next step, install them. This might also take a while. Great, so now that this is done, we have the uh, TabPy package installed. And um, if we look back at our presentation, we could start now, but also for the, uh, for the purpose of the session, I recommend you or I would ask you to install a number of other packages that we will need in, uh, in the session. So we're going to use pip again to do that. So the command again is very straightforward. We're going to use pip install, and then we're just going to provide a list of the name of names of the packages. So this is Pandas on the one hand, which provides us data structures, scikit-learn, which is, well, some machine learning algorithms, and then Slack client, which we need for the Slack demo, and also something called simple underscore Salesforce, which, as you might imagine, has something to do with Salesforce. And just like this, press enter, it's going to download all the packages, all the dependencies. That's going to take a while. And here we are. So now we're ready. And um, the fun part about TabPy is, especially now that we're in this, in this uh, new release, the easiest way to start TabPy is by just typing TabPy on the command line. And there we go. And again, you don't have to know what exactly is happening. It's going to come up with a few command line uh, information about some parameters that you can set if you know what you're doing. But for now, let's just keep everything in the default. And here it also tells you that the web service is now listening on port 9004. That's an important piece of information because what we need to do next is again check from Tableau if we can connect to that. So back in Tableau Desktop, click on Help, Settings and Performance, you know the drill, Manage External Service Connection. This time we're going to set TabPy External API. This time we're also going to leave the HTTP in the front. It's just the syntax and the port, as we just saw, is 9004. So if we now click on Test Connection, we are presented with the prompt that we are successfully connected to the external service. Now, just for good measure, I also want to show you how you connect to the external services from Tableau Prep, even though you're going to see that in the session. 
that's not really a uh, setting that you do for the client, but it's something you do inside your flow. So I'm just going to open some flow here and edit a new or add a new script step, because this is basically how you do those things in Tableau and Tableau Prep. And then again, you can choose between rsurf and tabpy. Let's start with rsurf for now. Connect to rsurf server, and this is the same uh, window that we have. Here for server, you can type either 127.0. One, oops, or you can also just type localhost, it's the same. The port, hope you remember, is 6311. You don't need a username, you don't need a password, so let's just check if that works. And if we sign in, we can see there's now a connection to localhost 6311. Don't be put off by this, by this message up here, um, that's not really important right now. So that's our serve. Then let's also try tabpy. Let's click on tabpy and connect to tabpy server. And again, this one is localhost, only with Papai you need to provide the HTTP. And the port is 9004, no username, no password needed right now. Click sign in, and you can see we are connected to our Tapai server. So that's basically all you need. We're done. Um, we installed, hopefully, the most recent versions of Tableau Desktop and Prep. We installed R, R service, we installed some packages for R, we connected Tableau to R server works from desktop and from prep and we also installed python we installed tabpy we installed a few packages we spin we spun up tabpy and we made sure we can connect to tabpy from tableau desktop and tableau uh, prep as well so that means we are done thank you for watching i hope this was helpful to you if you have any more questions please feel free to contact us either before the the sko or at sko but i guess we're going to see you in seattle